New at five, a Portland high school teacher interrupts a class discussion on rape culture. Why students are angry and the school district is now apologizing for it. It's basically pay more, get less. That's how Oregon Representative Suzanne Bonamici is summing up the new Republican health care bill aimed at replacing Obamacare. What do you need to know as it heads to the Senate for debate? And is a French soccer team trying to poach players from the Portland Thorns? Why a tweet has Thorns owners seen red cards? This is KGW News at 5. A gorgeous Sunday in the Rose City. This is a live look from our Wells Fargo Skycam of downtown Portland. Look at that blue sky and all those boats out on the Willamette. Switch it up. Let's head out to the coast. This is what it looks like at Cannon Beach. Wow, that is amazing. A great weekend to get out and get some sun and sand. Hello everyone, I'm Nina Melhoff. Thank you for watching tonight. As pretty as this weekend is, we want to know how long it's going to stick around. Brian Brennan joins us from the roof of KGW and you have some good news for us, Brian. News. Anytime I can bring these really cool purple sunglasses up to the <laughs> roof, I am very happy. There is barely a cloud in the sky right now. It is gorgeous. Just a nice little light breeze. A lot of people sent in some pictures on social media. And we can't wait to show that to you later in the show. For now, Diane Yates, she really summed it up very well, saying a uh, one cloud in the sky and a glass of Pinot. That sounds pretty nice right now. It is continuing to be sunny. Our radar shows there barely is a cloud in the sky. High pressure is building and you can see clouds way off the coast. Those might bring a few clouds tomorrow, but that's about it. It'll be sunny again tomorrow. Right now, temperatures are in the mid 60s for high temperatures today. That is right around where we're supposed to be for this time of year. As you start your work week off, I think the roads will be clear with how many people call in sick. It will start off a little chilly in the morning, but we get warm right into the 70s on Monday and we have more 70s in the forecast. It really looks wonderful for the first half of the week. We'll tell you all about that coming up, Nina, in the full forecast. We love it, Brian. Thank you so much. Our other big story tonight, a Grant High School teacher's letter is getting a lot of attention this weekend and not all of it is positive. The subject matter it's a controversial one. He addressed rape culture and questioned the idea of just what it is and does it actually exist. Our Christine Pitawanich is live at Grant High School in Northeast Portland tonight. And Christine, you spoke with a couple of these students who have some strong opinions about this teacher's words. And Nina, they are not the only ones. The letter from a history teacher here is causing quite the uproar among teachers, kids, and parents. This three-page letter went out to freshmen at Grant High School last week. In it, the teacher who distributed it apologized for interrupting a class to give his views on rape culture. He says in his three-page in-depth letter, quote, rape culture is a theoretical construct that is ill-defined. What exactly is rape culture? I don't see it in my life or the lives of any of the men and women I have known, end quote. Students say they don't think the teacher was trying to hurt any feelings, that he was trying to convey a different way of looking at rape culture. Still, they say him being a white, educated man skews his perspective. He sees a very small portion of this really large issue because in his essay, he says, like, no one in my life has experienced this. I personally haven't. But I think he's missing the greater story. Students at Grant High say the class the teacher interrupted was full of freshmen talking about gender and rape culture. And to them, that was the greater issue. Um, my issue is specifically the audience. I, in my opinion, and going back to when I was a freshman, I would not be able to receive this information, especially how it was written and the caliber that he wrote it at. I know that I wouldn't be able to comprehend that if a teacher handed it to me in the classroom. Portland Public Schools weighed in, saying in part, quote, the perspective of the teacher does not reflect nor support our approach to educating students on sexual assault. They also said, we apologize for any harm or negative impact. 
If you're unfamiliar with the term rape culture, the group Women Against Violence Against Women says feminists introduced the term in the 70s. It was designed to show the way society blamed victims of sexual assault and normalized male sexual violence. The teacher's letter has caused quite the uproar. Like I said, a lot of the firestorm on social media images of the letter have been shared hundreds of times. If you'd like to read the letter for yourself, you can head to KGW.com and click on news links. Back to you. All right, Christine, thank you. Skamania County deputies say they have found two trail runners safe after they spent the night in the Clark County wilderness. Searchers found 65-year-old John Zerer and 43-year-old Andrea Javarmbeck today in Clark County. The pair went trail running yesterday morning but never came home. Authorities aren't saying what kind of condition they're in, but they are expected to be okay. So we've already been hearing from both sides of the aisle in the Senate that they're not going to take up this bill as is. That's the good news. The bad news is we don't know where they're going to go. Washington's battle over health care hit home this weekend. Across the country, representatives and senators spent days meeting with constituents at packed town hall meetings. Local leaders from both sides of the aisle are no exception. KGW's Maggie Vespa has more. Yeah, good evening. We'll start here at Lincoln High School, where Representative Suzanne Bonamici met with hundreds here today to talk about, among other things, Thursday's pivotal health care vote and what she thinks lies ahead. The access to reproductive health care, uh, that's at risk, too. Congresswoman Suzanne Bonamici today broke down what the Republican health care bill would mean were it to become law. She faced a variety of questions, like one from Kayla Anderson, who suffers from MS and is insured through her husband's out-of-state employer. And so I wouldn't put it past them for them to drop me off of our coverage. The bill still requires insurers cover those with pre-existing conditions, but it allows states to opt out of a provision that mandates insurers charge everyone within certain age brackets the same rate. That means someone who's already sick, like Kayla, could get charged a lot more than someone who's not. I mean, there are children that are born with diseases and to deny them health care is inhumane. Representative Bonamici says she's heard countless similar stories and comments since the House narrowly approved this bill on Thursday. And I hope that it's stopped in the Senate and we get back to the table and figure out how we make health care affordable and accessible. At the same time, Oregon's only Republican Congressman Greg Walden, who voted in favor of the bill, held a town hall yesterday in eastern Oregon. We reached out to him for comment on how it went. We received a statement from his office about Thursday's vote. It read in part the Republican health care bill will quote protect those with pre-existing conditions and provide states with the flexibility they need to help meet the unique needs of their citizens. Reporting at Lincoln High School, I'm Maggie Vespa, KGW News. You know, this is the way legislation used to be passed. There'd be a House bill, there'd be a Senate bill, then you'd get together the conferees who understood by that time the intricacies of what they're doing and come up with a bill that can go to the president's desk, and I hope that's what we do here. That was Republican Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri on NBC's Meet the Press this morning explaining how he hopes the health care bill will come up with a compromise after the House put forth their ideas. More of his fellow Republicans, though, are even saying this bill is dead on arrival in the Senate. Many getting an earful at town halls around the country. Jennifer Johnson shows us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Despite a White House victory lap Thursday after the House passed its health care bill, President Trump is now putting the heat on the Senate, tweeting Sunday Republican senators will not let the American people down. But Senate Republicans say the House bill is dead on arrival and a 13 member group is working on a new plan. The House bill is not going to come before us. The Senate is starting from scratch. We're going to draft our own bill and I'm convinced that we're going to take the time to do it right. Republicans are already getting heat from worried constituents. Congressman Tom Reed got an earful at a town hall Saturday. The White House says those with pre-existing conditions who were protected under Obamacare shouldn't worry. Nobody wants folks who have a pre-existing illness or injury not to be covered. We want to make certain that we can do it at a lower price and broader choices for patients. But even some Republican governors are concerned as this bill eliminates Medicaid expansion. They give you about three or four thousand dollars, a tax credit of three or four thousand dollars to buy health insurance. Now, who, what, what do you think you can buy for three thousand or four thousand dollars? 
Do you know what the deductible would be in that? 22 major health care groups, including the American Medical Association, have come out against the House plan. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. North Korean officials say they have detained an American citizen for what they're calling hostile acts against the country. Authorities say Kim Hak Song worked for the university in Pyongyang before he was arrested. On Wednesday, North Korean officials announced they arrested another teacher at the same university. They aren't saying if the cases are connected. Kim Hak Song is now among at least four Americans being detained in North Korea. Tonight, France has a new president, and it's a big win for supporters of the European Union. 39-year-old Emmanuel Macron is the youngest French president ever elected. The independent Macron beat far-right candidate Marine Le Pen in a 65 to 35 percent vote. Analysts say Macron's victory shows French voters overwhelmingly reject the anti-EU and anti-immigration stance Le Pen ran on. Well, that traffic alert just keeps going through the weekend. Part of I-5, if you haven't noticed, still shut down again this weekend. This is a live look at that area. Northbound lanes closed now from the Markham to the Fremont Bridges through central Portland. They should reopen by tomorrow morning's commute. There is just one more closure next weekend. Put that on your calendar. This is also crews can make those repairs underneath the Burnside Bridge.